Pony hair girl? What? You have the hair of a unicorn. Beautiful. Glad you're my little pony. Uh, your beard needs to go. No. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. All right, oh, guys. Oh. Get, 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 a, get a room because we're live. All right. Yep. Folks, I'm your host, Dash V. As you saw, we have uh, Jeremy and his friend Brittany are here on the show with us today. We've got mm -hmm. another special guest, but I'm going to save that one for last. Who else we got on the call with us right now? Me, Miss Lizzie Hedgehog. Hey, Lizzie. Hi. And of course, you got me. Hey, everyone. Our mom. Mm -hmm. Yep. AKA Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have <laughs> Benjamin today from uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Battle Racers. He is a game designer uh, for that game, and he's going to be talking a bit of, a bit with us about the game and about the Kickstarter. So, Benjamin, welcome aboard, man. Welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Any any time. I think Lizzie is, like, super excited. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at her. Look at how, how red she's just beaming. Like, anytime we do anything Sega Sonic related, she's got the plushie there and everything. She's all set. So much Sonic. So, yeah. Oh, so you haven't seen my room, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm seeing it. All right. Oh. Lizzie, show off your room real quick. Let's see all your plushies. Uh, well, I don't Let know give you the floor. Give me a second. Uh, you know what? This might be kind of hard. Let's see. You're everywhere <laughs> over there. Let's go over there. You see that thing? It's not even done yet. My goodness. It's just Sonic. So, what about the other guys? Oh. What about the other guys? I don't know. Knuckles, Tails, you know, the friends. They're, they're in here somewhere. Oh, see, I, I have these Hello Kitty ones, so they're in here somewhere. So when my room's done, I'll update pictures. But right now, Sonic's everywhere and everybody else is everywhere. So, <laughs> so yeah. Well, there's one I can show you right now. This cutie. The Hello Kitty... Oh, oh, Hello Kitty Sonic. Sonic. Hello Kitty Sonic, yeah. serious? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah here, let me uh, give her the floor. You can get a better shot. Uh, Sonic 25th anniversary, they had the um, Hello Kitty, the Hello Kitty Sonic editions, you know, like Sonic. Um, what's her name? The little bunny girl dressed as Amy. Oh, you wow. Had him dressed as Tails. And Tails in here somewhere. I don't know where he's at, but he's in there somewhere. My room's a mess. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's like a it's like a sonic explosion. Happened. Oh, it's a museum. Well, I don't know that you can call it a museum. That that room looks too fun to be a museum. Yeah, but some of my sonic stuff is gonna be going in boxes, like like you know those clear plastic boxes where it mm -hmm. never comes back out. Because a lot of my sonic stuff is still in its box, so I figured, you know what. Everything is gonna stay in its box. Are you are you Sonic. talking are you talking like legit like legit display cases or are you putting these in like Tupperware or something? No 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 Le legit cases because there's some stuff that you don't want it to come out like like I have all the Hello Kitty editions like the sparkly one and I've got two others and it's like no I'm not gonna play with them touch them do anything with them I'm just gonna put them in plastic boxes you, you, know, uh -huh. the, you know plastic display cases and. That's what they will stay for eternity. So Benjamin, do you do you collect? Uh, I collect games. So I collect a lot of board games, role playing games. I have my whole my my whole garage is full of them. Uh, actually, that's, that's kind of stupid because I'm transporting them wherever I go, and, and I've been <laughs> in many countries. So I always like like these huge cases of games and books that I I read. I read them sometimes. I mean, they're useful. They're like I have, I'm I'm a big role playing gamer, and then uh, went into into board game later. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. What 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 draws you? Like, if you had to compare, like, um, you know, what do you like about a, a video game proper, uh, and what is it that you like about? If you contrasted that to what you like about board games, well, well, how, how would you distinguish between the the two? Do you have a preference, or? I mean, nowadays, so I have I have like a problem with my wrist, so I can't play as many video games as I used to. Uh, so that's one small. That's the reason why. I, actually went to board game in the first place. But that, what I like about board game is more like the, uh, the fact you play with your friends. It's the, like I, I walk, I'm an IT guy, so I walk all day on my computer. So the board game is nice because you can, you, be, you play with your friends, you talk to people, you know, that's the aspect I really like about board games. Uh, nice. Video games. I don't really play our multiplayer online uh, video games though. So that's, that's the, I get my multiplayer with 
by playing with other people, like either in a game shop or or friends. Nice. Well, talk to me a bit about this uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Battle Racers uh, Kickstarter here. So, did um, it's by Shinobi Seven? Did did you approach them? Did they approach you? Like, how how did you get to work on this uh, on on this game? So, <clears throat> I was make, I made I made game like uh, one more board game before. So I knew I started to get new people in the industry, and so they approached me and other designers asking about like they got the license of of like to do a to do a modern modern Sonic, and they were like, okay, we we'll, who wants to make a game about Sonic? And they gave us like three months to come up with a uh, draft of a design. Uh, I remember it was on Christmas. And so I spent most of my Christmas uh, time like working on that design because I really wanted it. And uh, then we submitted it, I submitted it. And then a couple of months later, they said, yep, you, we, gotta, we, we want your design, sign the contract, and then get to, to work for real in six, six months, nine, six, nine more months, and, and then uh, deliver like the, what it is today. Wow! And nice. So, so and, how, how excited were you when this when this happened? Were you just kind of like, ah, if it happens, it happens, or was it this like? So it's it's interesting. Like the, the, I was super excited, uh, like at the very beginning, to even being like kind of like because I'm still a newbie, right, in the game design uh, space. So like to have the opportunity to make a design of like if, uh, an IP as famous as Sonic, like a character which is so iconic, right? It's it's kind of scary actually. I mean, like I was super excited, <laughs> but uh, I was also like cared and now that I'm doing the Kickstarter I'm kind of like I'm happy because people seem to, to to feel that I have replicated the what Sonic is correctly or as correctly as I could I guess uh, but uh, mm. but yeah it was it was pretty like daunting uh, but also like when you game design having inspiration is super important like I'm very much like a in the, if you are, I don't know if you guys play board game but like you know you have like very abstract board game and you have very thematic board game like I'm a very thematic kind of guy so when there's a strong theme like Sonic, is it, for me it's so much easier. Like, I don't, okay, like you know, Amy needs to be like this. Tails need to be like this. So I can. It's it really helps uh, to do uh, to uh, to design the game. So very excited um, all the way really. And like now, like when, when at the launch of the Kickstarter, I'm kind of like I was like, okay, now the real fan are gonna see it. And I know the community of Sonic is pretty strong and opinionated. And so I was like, okay, I was ready for the onslaught. So far, so mm -hmm. good. I think. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, I did notice, uh, I'm going to throw out here, uh, I'm not going to ask the question because I already know the answer, but um, just for confirmation, I'm looking at the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions for the project. Is this an officially licensed project? And I was I was happy and surprised to see, yes, it is. So this isn't like a like a wish project. This isn't oh, like yeah. a passion project. This, in, in the sense of, this isn't something where like, oh, let's collect the money and then see if we can make something happen. Like, according to the FAQ, yeah, the license is already... The, the necessary approvals are already in place. So each time we make, like every single piece of the, of the game went through Sega approval. So like, you know, there's a, it is definitely an official product. It's definitely something that is, that Sega is, uh, is supporting. It is, a, it is Shinobi 7, like we are the one making it. Sega yeah. is giving us a license, but they don't, beyond that, and approving that we are treating the license correctly, they don't really have a role. Um, yeah. there. Uh, so um, no, no, it is, Hundred percent official, uh, and uh, they help us. Like all the assets are official, and everything is official. Mm. You know what I was just thinking would be like really awesome. I don't know if they would actually. I don't know if they'd be able to do it if we'd be able to pull it off. But I was just thinking like, when this releases, I should get one, and we should see if we could get uh, Al Nilsson, right, Tom Kalinsky, and you <laughs> on the show, and like try to play like a round yeah. of the game on the show. That would be pretty badass. No, yeah, they'll be fine oh. too. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic explosion. <laughs> so, um, right. I had a, a kind of a couple of questions as far as like what your approach was to design the game mm -hmm. uh, that I was curious about. So, when you're obviously a video game and a board game, there's some similarities, I guess, in how you might approach the design, but a, a lot of differences too. Um, so, I was curious. Um, like what core concepts of the game did you want to try to translate into the experience of playing the board game? So the main thing, right? And so for my, just kind of give a bit of background, like my background for Sonic. Oh, give me one second. No, I think my daughter wants to uh, talk to me. <laughs> uh, well. uh, so the main thing is about like it's as, it's about uh, speed, right? So Sonic is about speed. Um, I played a lot of Sonic, like classic Sonic. 
and a bit of Sonic, like on and off afterward. But really, like the core of my love of of like the IP and Sonic and everything come from like playing Sonic on my Game Gear. To be very specific, mm-hmm. uh, I played Sonic on the uh, on the Mega Drive I'm from France, so it's Mega Drive. Um, uh, but uh, so we, I tried to make that speed element, and you know, the idea of like controlling your speed, going as fast as you can without like hitting uh, an obstacle or a bad nick. That that idea of like uh, going fast, but if you go too fast, it becomes dangerous. And so there is this mm-hmm. idea of like in in board game of like risk management and push your luck. Uh, it's a common like terms. So the idea is like you're not really pushing your luck, but you're pushing your speed. And the faster you go, the the more dangerous it becomes. Uh, and if you have five players or three, or even like like two players, you can kind of play without being too aggressive toward each other. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. like. A three, yes, if your group is friendly, and a four, yeah, you almost have to eat each other. So then you become, <laughs> you become a pretty aggressive game. Um, the, oh, wow. The idea of, like, that's why it's battle racer, right? I mean, people, like, a lot of people in the Kickstarter, they talk about the racing aspect, but there's a, definitely a battle aspect. And that's, that's the thing which I, I was, I had to kind of extrapolate a little bit because it is, um, like, Sonic is not a multiplayer game, right? I mean, mm-hmm. they're all, they all, like, Sonic Fighter and they're all Sonic Racers. Um, but I wanted to make it a Sonic game, but multiplayer, and so find a way to make that work uh, was kind of the challenge and the, the, the interesting part of, of Sonic. Also, like the game is nine plus, um, mm-hmm. so it, it's mm-hmm. basic nine plus means it's a family game. It's a game you can mm-hmm. play with with young teenagers, um, and so for me it's also interesting because I'm as a designer and as a player I kind of towards a heavier type of game. So making a game that is like family oriented that you can just crack and and play. And it takes like an hour max, and 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 everybody enjoy it. And you know, it's kind of like it's 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 light, um, right? But, then, but it's not like it's it's it's. I mean, you, people will have to play it to really realize it. But it's very it can it can be quite tricky. Uh, have you right. have you play tested it with the family? Yes, yes, yes. So I play I played with with uh, with with my uh, with uh, with a younger audience uh, and uh, with my friends, uh, obviously. And then uh, it was it was it was protested by by Shinobi Seven as well. Nice, nice. Well, well I assume they did more playtesting than just the family. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I I was wondering if specifically you were able to to do some in home. You know, yeah, my wife is good. Is should really be co designer of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, D Hine, I just want to throw really quickly. D Hine has a, a slightly off topic question. I think it gets more into like kind of my question of like are you a collector that kind of thing um he wants to know if you're planning on if, if you're personally planning on getting any of the uh, comic books uh specifically the idw sonic comic books when the first four issues get released this so year that, do that, you follow the comics or i i don't i do not follow the comics uh um, okay. you know uh but uh per, so personally like i know of the comics because i have researched sonic so actually so i wasn't reading i, I read a few when after i got the kind of the Okay, you can do Sonic game. I started to to document to, to to read even more about Sonic. Like you know, there's a big wiki pages about sex, wiki pages about Sonic. So I, I read all that, and mm-hmm. so I, I and so I started to learn a lot more about the world of Sonic, especially the more mm-hmm. re- recent stuff, right? Um, so definitely, there is a lot there. And to be honest, I have a lot of characters. Like I've made a lot of characters. Uh, they're not all. Mm-hmm. They won't. They won't all exist. It's just you know, when you design, you always have a lot of fluff, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. some of them are broken too. And um, but I, I think right now, like the, our focus is really the the, the modern Sonic, and uh, and the uh, what we basically are pro- what we are proposing in the Kickstarter is is our main focus. And if you go to the rule book, there is like all the characters that we have kind of like defined as rules. So mm-hmm. this is kind of the scope of what we're proposing today. The, yeah, you know, you have to, you also have to be you have to be careful with Kickstarters. Like if you if you do too much. Like we 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 really we we were very serious, you know. Uh, Shinobi Seven is, is the really professionals, uh, and we want to deliver the product on time, right? And Kickstarter are mm-hmm. usually not on time, and so we really want. And the the more you add to a Kickstarter that you hadn't planned for, the more difficult it becomes. Yeah. So I think like for us to kind of focus on 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 the product we have delivered, the one we tested, the one we played, the one we know works. Mm-hmm. Is to provide the, the quality that we want to like the the idea of Sonic Battle Racer is that it, it is a quality game like it is a hobby game it's a hobby market game right mm-hmm. um, and so the miniatures are going to be high quality the game is the gameplay is 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 like 
one that like it's it's not I don't know I don't want, I don't want to be derogatory but it's 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 a game of game I guess. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So speaking of of the game, um, and different different aspects of it, you talked about the minifigures just briefly. Mm -hmm. Um, the scale of the minifigures for for those that are 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 measurement um handicapped, I guess. Um, <laughs> can can you show it like your fingers or something like how, what what are the sizes roughly of these minifigures? Uh, well, you know, you're asking the wrong person because it's like so I'm I'm French, so we use we use a metric system. And <laughs> <laughs> If you play, if you, I mean, like, there are forty millimeters. Forty millimeters is pretty big. Uh, if you ever played like any tabletop war games or like mm -hmm. Warhammer or War Machine, this kind mm -hmm. of thing, they are like Eric scale, so they are like thirty uh, between twenty-eight and thirty-five. So forty is bigger than that. Oh, so okay. It, it is so... like one point five inches for us Americans. Here you go. Okay. Thank so, you, Jeremy. So smaller than the amiibo. Smaller. Way smaller than, than the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Much smaller than an amiibo. Um, okay. Yeah, but they are pre-painted, which is like is Ooh. pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. It looks like the all the components look to be pretty high quality, which yeah. is always nice to see in a board game. Yep. And yeah, um, I have to say, everything oh, looks. <laughs> no, I was just going to say real quick. I'll pass it back over to you. Everything does look really, really quality in terms of what I've seen. Uh, they've got a really good spread on the. Um, if you go to the main campaign tab of the Kickstarter page, uh, where they're showing, you know, different uh, different aspects of the the cards and the boss cards and things like that, um, are these? I, I'll, I'll ask. So, are, are these like conceptual, or is that like, is this what some of these things actually look like? Like the like the figures are those uh, so all the, of the figures, or is that like what the actual figures look like? So those are like the kind of the the how do you say? Those are like the the current design, uh, but they're not completely okay. finished. So there is okay. still like there is still a lot of you can see like there are CGI right there are three D there are three mm -hmm. D poses. So all of those poses can uh, can be changed. Okay. Uh, which one I don't know. Uh, to be honest, this is kind of like when as a game designer I don't I I, I give recommendation, and and then like it's really more to the publisher. And the manufacturer, like they are, like when you go in the world of like making miniatures, there's a lot of things which are you have to take in consideration how you play with it. You have to take into consideration how you yeah. make them, uh, because yeah. like they are position, they are like position, like the, you, you can make the arms very weak, or it can make it very difficult to paint, or like so. There's a lot of like production okay. uh, things which is like are beyond like I mean, my understanding, to be honest. So. Um, but I think right now, like this is kind of the, the the position that they have today, and all of that uh, is subject to change, I guess. Man, every time, every I'm, I'm looking down at the uh, the Buzz Bomber miniatures, and the second that I saw them, all I could see is Sonic spazzing out as like dozens of rings just shower the screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> traumatized by those bees. <laughs> it's traumatized. You, know, you know, it's it's what happened in the board game too. So when you get hit. <laughs> uh, by, by, so it's like you, all your rings are going to go away. So I think one other thing I should address because people have been talking about it uh, during the Kickstarter yeah. is, um, you know, the the idea that uh, so you're going to race and you're going to get rings. The goal of the game, uh, and actually, at the early prototype, the goal of the game was to arrive first. And if there's a mm -hmm. racing game, you arrive first, you win. And I played it. We played it this way. Uh, and then after a while, um, the I don't know, I was playing Sonic Mania, and I was like, but Sonic is not about arriving first. Sonic is about getting as many rings as you can, right? That's what you do when you play Sonic. So that's why like, I, I tailored the game and changed it so it would be about getting rings. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it became a lot better, because then it's like everybody can, you always feel like you have a chance. Because the mm. uh, problem with racing game, any racing game, is you have what we call in board game like runaway leader, which is like somebody's going to go and, and, and be so far ahead it, like why? Why am I playing anymore? You know, why, what's the yeah. what? What's the point? And so, I um, mean, you can go for second place, I guess, but it's not, it's not as fun. So there's kind of the game balance itself by the guy who goes first. Yes, he goes first, but then at one point, he's gonna have to be very careful because uh, if, if he get hit, we lose all his rings, and then it helps the people behind him. Um, mm. And so you always have a chance until the the the, the finish line. And even after the finish line, the game works. Like you still have, you can basically still play your hand. So if you play your game right, you can actually win 
without even finishing the race, really. Wow. Uh, which is a bit counterintuitive. Like, you know, yeah. I get it. Uh, I understand. But as a multiplayer game, uh, it's more interesting. Yeah. And like, what I said to Kickstarter a couple of times, and I really believe it, is that if you want, you can always change it. I mean, you can always say, like, <laughs> hey, you can use the same yeah. system and say, well, I don't care about how many rings you get. You're just going to you're just gonna go to the finish line. I mean, it works, too. It's just you have to, uh, what people say don't really see is that um, I make a game for the broader appeal, right? To make a game that you can play with children, yeah. too. Um, and uh, if you make it very cutthroat, very aggressive, very competitive, uh, then you lose you lose part of that. That doesn't mean people shouldn't do it. And yeah. I've changed my game a million times. That's why I'm a game designer. You know? mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it, it seems like with the components that you could add or take away things, even as you're just learning it, or like you mentioned yeah. uh, example, with house with, rules. Yeah. yeah. With kids, I, for example, with kids, I remove all the bandits. Uh, like you know, the 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 Bandix works. You or if you look at the track, you can put more or less Bandix depending on the number of players. When I play with like really nine years old or even eight, if they're like kind of gamer kids, I remove the Bandix at least for the first game, because <laughs> yeah. the idea is like when you play your racing car, you have to control your speed, you have to control in which kind of like which lane you are in, and it requires. It's actually very good for kids because it requires kind of foresight. We can just think about like. A couple of move ahead. It's not like chess. It's not that complicated. But just a couple of move ahead of like I'm going to go here, then I'm going to go on that platform, and then I'm going to I'm going to jump here. And so like it, it, doing that when there are bad nicks, which are kind of like they have zone of effect, then it becomes a bit more like you have to me, uh, have a mental image, and it's harder for kids, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, when it's on the board, it's very clear: water spikes, you know, elevations, the platforms. So. Yeah, the game can be changed like that. I, I think it's something we could even put in the rule if we wanted to. I don't know if it's really required. I think people are, are smart enough to do what they want to do with it. Cool. Yeah. So, Mike, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> I'll just get one more question. I know we got some viewer questions here too that we can get to. Yeah. Um, I was just curious if there were like any particular board games that when you're designing the game, you're kind of inspired by because the, the gameplay. Um, I haven't played it, but it sounds kind of familiar to uh, Formula One a bit, where you're trying to like manage speed and shift gears um, in that game. So it kind of reminds me of that in like modular board designs, like we've seen with like Zombicide and stuff. So I was just curious if you had like any particular games that um, were your inspiration when you're making this. I think so. I always do that. I look at I look at every game that in existence that have that. So you know, from like the very famous one, like Formula One, to maybe like the more Hobby one like Flam Rouge, which is a newer like bike bike racing games. Um, ah, cool. And uh, but um, even car racing games as well. The name doesn't I don't remember the name, but there's a, there's a couple of very good ones. Um, and we really, like at the end I was like distilling it and trying to remove it. Also, as a game designer, I want to do my thing, right? It's kind of like I I I, I have fun with by doing something which is different. So. Mm. Uh, I love form I, I love Formula One, just Formula Day or Formula One. I I, I really love that game, uh, but it's a uh, uh, so Sonic is simpler than that game in many ways. Um, mm. uh, it's more complex in other ways, but because the, the a lot of racing games don't have um, they don't have platform, right? They don't have water, they don't have spikes. So basically, I think the racing aspect is simpler, but there's a, there is like obviously there's more obstacles. There's more diff there's different things which are closer to the to Sonic. Uh, so and also like it's funny, like I, I had to kind of be careful because Sonic is not a car, right? So it doesn't drive like a car. Yeah. So like for example, like uh, the, the turn, the turn track was the hardest piece. Like the turn track, mm -hmm. I, I had like five or six different designs for the turn track. So like in Sonic you have you start, you have two segments and then you have a turn track. So you're gonna go and then you go in the turn track and then you go you you had two more segments and then you have another turn track. And we do that for, for multiple reasons. One is to it, it serves as kind of like a buffer. So mm -hmm. if you have like two, so everybody can kind of like meet each other, and also it kind of you don't see you don't see the rest of the of the of the of the track. So it's very dangerous if you go very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. And the last thing is also it is better because otherwise you would have to need a very 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 long table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Because that, that, that's the weird. That's, that's kind of weird that even people don't think about. If you put six tracks. Uh, you know, next to each other, you need a really long table. Right. Uh, yeah. But that said, no, no, there is 16 tracks in the base game, I think. So if you want to make a gigantic board of Sonic, you can. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, but the turn track, like, uh, the very first turn track I made, you could drift. 
like you, ah. know? <laughs> you know yeah, and i was like cool yeah well you know when you when you when you race on foot you don't really drift so <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so this is the kind of thing where like okay well and i was like oh and, and, it, and it was complicated it was like oh you know like uh, how do you do that you move x number of space and blah blah blah, blah. and i was like mm-hmm. okay, so i i had to reiterate that design a lot to make it like what it is today um which i really like it i think like the way it is today it does what i want it to do uh, design wise um I wouldn't say it has a direct equivalent to like the game or anything, but it it, it works and it's and it's pretty simple. Okay, so yeah. design wise, uh, Fiery Red uh, asks, uh, what was the decision uh, for making uh, spinners uh, indestructible? So oh. I was looking, yeah, I was looking at the different like buzzing badniks. Uh, how I call them is like so the, and um, there isn't many threats when you are jumping, uh, really. Uh, so I think that's basically that's basically why because uh, they, they they basically they change a lot of the game in terms of like you can't jump uh, and so if you have spike just after that it makes the decision of like going through that space very de- through that space very dangerous um, early in the design you could actually destroy by this, the the flying by Nick by uh, the uh, spinners by being just under it. But uh, again, like it's kind of fiddly. It's hard to remember. Like, we, the thing is, like when we play test the game, right? We see, we look at people and see if they can remember the rules, uh, because you don't want to. Have, if you have to look at the rule set every five minutes, then it's 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 not good, right? So, yeah, you have the rule that technically you can go under a spinner, and then if you jump under the spinner, like in the video game, you will destroy the spinner, right? Um, but yeah. nobody remember it, <clears throat> and uh, then it's confusing, and so we just say, well, you know, if you jump on it or you get damaged. That's it. And Ooh. this is the kind of like iteration you go through when you game design to make the game uh, more palatable to uh, yeah. to everybody. Again, you know, if, if somebody want to make a custom rule, the game works this way. If you can remember the rule, it, yeah. it works. You know, it doesn't break it. That's the nice thing about a, a family game or a household game. I mean, certainly in tournament mode, they might have you know they might have the rule or not have the rule, but yeah. they should clearly say whether or not they're going with that rule. But at, at home, right? Like it's kind of like when you land on free parking. Yeah. You know, the, the the Parker Brothers police, right? <laughs> <Exactly. Parker Brothers. laughs> Right, they're not they're not coming in to like arrest you and say like you put that five hundred back on free parking right now. Right? <laughs> you're, you're walking a thin line, Mister. A thin line. We tested that game the way oh, it is there, right? That's the thing. Also, like you know, I, I um I did some like other design and I, and in Kickstarter as well, and I got some feedback. And actually, some of the feedback was was good. And I was like, as a designer, I look at it and I was like, okay, that makes sense. It's better this way. It doesn't add complexity. I need to play test it a little bit more, but it works. Um, a lot of the, uh, right now, like the game that we are proposing, the design the way it is, it, it works. And actually there's a guy, I think he's in England, who actually like, and that's really impressed me a lot. He printed the game, like using just what we had in the Kickstarter. He <laughs> made, made a prototype of the game and played it. And I was like, this is nuts. Oh. I mean, this is like, I was like, wow, this is, I mean, by nuts, I mean extremely impressive, and I'm very happy he made it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and then he liked the game, and I was like, well, that's just, uh, that's just you know, the guy deserves the guy deserves a free game, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I gotta ask, um, are you gonna have like a water section? I mean, <laughs> have you have you ever played like Sonic One and look at looked at the famous Lapras Zone and how difficult it was? I mean, are you gonna have any of the water? Like section in the game. So like so, like, so the, there is like a, so there's three expansions in the game, right? There is a mm-hmm. there is all expansion. There's a me- metallic madness or mechanic madness. I call it mechanic madness. I know it's metallic madness, so we'll ch- mm-hmm. probably change to metallic madness. Um, and uh, I forgot the other one, um, Metropolis or something like that. I forgot how I call it. Six like Metropolis. And uh, so they're all inspired by obviously like the levels and and, and so like. <laughs> Um, the base you game. Need to find air bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't. They didn't do that actually. Um, the uh, <laughs> so the base game like have water, and water is the enemy, right? So it's when you play Sonic, water oh, yes. is bad. <laughs> you fall in the water. I mean, you're not gonna get, you're gonna get killed, but you're gonna slow down dramatically, and it's gonna right. be problematic. Uh, so you don't want to fall in water. The spikes damage you. There's platform and elevation. That's a big concept of the game that you need to jump on platforms to over, to uh, to not get stopped. Um, the all ex- the like, the one that we just unlocked with shadow, uh, uh-huh. click on it. So I'm not like I don't know what I'm talking about. Please. Boop, 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 boop. 
put the face. Yeah. <coughs> I just clicked on it so I can have a visual reference. Um, so it, it's both shadow and also an expansion. So it comes with um, with six track and they're all like uh, what we call like a, it's all ocean. So it has uh, uh, the uh, the oil spill. And so when you go in, in oil, it's, it works kind of like water, but it's also like if you if your speed is reduced to zero when you're in oil, you get damaged. So you get killed, but it can kill you basically. So it's it's more dangerous than water. Uh, and uh, then there is like a, in mechanic madness, there's other things. I don't want to spoil too much. I think I want we want to kind of as it gets unlocks and and we want to make like future update in the Kickstarter when we're going to talk about those uh, as they come. But yeah, awesome. we, every expansion have like kind of like a, a little like nod to the level that uh, they were based on. Because this is a game for the fan, right? This is a game. So we, I want people, we want people like when they look at the miniature, when they look at the at the track, they they feel like it's it was directly inspired by the game. Like it's definitely not a, a based on design. Like it's funny when I put, I think it's on Reddit. I was some people say like why people are making original games about about IPs, and I was like, well, isn't that better? Like, do you want me to take a to take Formula D and just slap Sonic on it? I mean, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, if you want to like, uh, sh shift gear on your when you play Sonic, it's a bit weird. I mean, it's definitely cheaper than make a brand new design. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, but I think like it's this is a game like made by people who love Sonic, uh, you know, and and wanted to uh, love video games and want really to, to people to feel like that that love in the game, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. design, not just the pretty miniatures and, 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 and tracks. Speaking of people feeling love, I, I, I'm not I'm not going to uh. I'm not going to require details about why Jeremy and friends feed cut out for a good uh, four or five minutes there, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're glad to have you both back. So she was asking my mom something. Don't worry. Okay, all right, we're going to go with that. So um, <laughs> I did want to say, uh, you know, something that would be interesting, and I know this is, you know, up to um, up to the folks that are doing going to do the final uh, packaging and all that other stuff. But where there are expansion packs and everything. I think it'd be kind of hilarious if the expansion packs uh, referred to the ability to lock on to the original uh, to the original game, right? <laughs> kind of like uh, kind of like uh, Sonic and Knuckles lock on technology, right? Oh, so, yeah. you, know, you can get extra tracks, you can get extra things, and they just kind of lock on to the original the original game. Maybe they can use some of that sixteen bit lingo from uh, from the good old days. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> So was there any, um, so we talked a bit before the show, um, you know, you've played uh, Genesis, you played Nintendo, you know, back in the day and everything. Was, is there anything in the game that is specifically like, um, you know, maybe, maybe the game didn't need to have it like from a game perspective, uh, but from a like you as a, as a fan of this? Like you, you wanted to make sure that it got in there in some way. Is there any like kind of like thing that's signature to your particular uh, love of Sonic the Hedgehog or Sonic the Hedgehog lore or anything that that's in there? I think there is a so there is, and I'm not going to say what it, where it is. If somebody finds it, then it's great. Like in one of the expansions, there's something very nerdy, very video game nerdy. Uh, I don't know if like the, the the you can see it without actually buying the game and see the expansion, but there's. There is something which is like a reference to the video game culture. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's hidden in the game. It's like an Easter egg, if you want. Gotcha. Um, Ooh, Easter egg. Uh, then, uh, but in terms of like the love of Sonic, it's I think it's it's nothing. I wouldn't say I, I want to call out something in particular as much as the if you look at the agility, the abilities, and the powers of every single characters, um, especially the core one. Like the I want to be honest, like the core one was the one I knew the best, so it was easier for me to. To uh to devise what they were, and then for the other one, what I did is like wikis and and uh, like played when I had the game, and or like just uh, look at a lot of videos on YouTube of people playing mm -hmm. characters to understand like you know what the what the shtick. Um, I read every reviews of every single games ever made. Uh, but uh, like if you look at for example like like little touch like Amy, like she's very good at chasing people. So, uh, no Sonic, uh, you know that, that that's the thing, right? So like her, her ability is literally like she, she's she's faster when she's chasing somebody. Oh wow! Right? Oh. Uh, and uh, and then she has a pico pico armor that she can hit people always, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Why don't why do I picture Lizzie like being that character? 
uh, or like or like knuckles, <laughs> um, knuckles like his stuff and everything. But his thing is like he can he can climb. So when like in the game, when you run and there's a platform in front of you, he can just climb over the platform. He doesn't need to jump. Oh, nice. Yeah. So there's layers, nice. like oh, the the whole game abilities and and uh, and powers are or try to be a nerd to the actual uh, to nice. the actual game. Like for example, Doctor Eggman. Like all the bad nicks basically do what he wants because he created them. Mm -hmm. So he, nice. he can, you know, he can throw them and he can like move them around. And, are there so. any? Uh, are there any like destructible barriers, like a like a wall on part of the track or something like that? And then like mm -hmm. Sonic would be able to bust through them. Knuckles would be able to punch through them, but he's going to go through them slower. No. And then the no, others no. would have to go around. Nope, not today. Be interesting. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, mm -hmm. I think, I think to some extent, like I shouldn't say that. I would say, but design-wise, there is still design space. Gotcha. So yeah. I don't know if it's not room. a promise. I get it. That's right. not a promise. There is, there is, there is still design space for for still room to experiment because because maybe space. that makes the game better, and maybe it makes the game just like you said. Maybe it makes the game more complicated. Maybe it makes the maybe. game unbalanced. Right. There's, there's that. That's that's the other two main things that you just mentioned. It's like the complexity and the balance uh, always increase. Uh, the main thing is basically like you know if the game I mean like you know it's a business like we all fan but it's a business if the game sells there will be more mm -hmm. right if the game sells amazingly there will be more if the game sells well that may be it you know uh, we, oh. there, nobody knows how how this kind of this stuff uh, goes um, that's in the mystery of like selling stuff yeah. So that's a that's a indirect answer to somebody's uh, question that they had earlier. I think it was D Hine who was asking, you know, what what's next? What's after this? And I think you kind of summed it up great. Like it it's kind of an open book. It really depends on on what happens. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of factors outside the control. Like it, it it could be a really excellent game, and then maybe like me, Lizzie, and you are the only ones that buy it. I don't think that that'll be the case, but. You know, it could be wildly <laughs> successful. Yeah, there are, there are right? a lot of great games that don't find their market. Can I make a suggestion for the next project? Ace Combat related. <laughs> <laughs> he wants you to do an Ace Combat game. <laughs> Ace Combat game. Yeah. So, that, that yeah. yeah. Jeremy, that Jeremy is our uh, resident Ace Combat fanboy here. So, so. You, know what, <laughs> he, he, you know what? Actually, it's, it's a pretty good theme. Uh, there isn't a lot of like. Oh, no, I guess not. There's a couple of very famous uh, uh, flight, like uh, flight combat games. Yeah. Uh, yes. I just know I, I've I played it for a minute. No, they're the, they're all, they're the big famous ones. Yeah. 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 And Jeremy prefers to be called an Ace Combat Ambassador. Ambassador. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they haven't made one for a while now. At this rate, there should be a free copy of Ace Combat Seven. The way I promote that. Yeah, Jeremy is uh, impatiently waiting for the announcement. So, um, mm -hmm. one question we did have from a uh, fiery red seventy seven on here. They're wondering if there was any way they could get a boss mode gameplay video, um, or one with the as you said is optimal four player game. And they said yeah. they love the video you posted and the variability of the game. Well, that's that's for so I don't have my prototypes anymore because uh, for me, I like, guess people understand like this game I designed it. A while back, and mm -hmm. so all of that has been has been is my publisher have it, um, he, but uh, I think it's up to him. I'm sure he's watching this right now, so uh, he can decide for it. Mm -hmm. You know, people have been asking for it. I think they're they're trying to to figure out how to make that happen. Cool, yeah. nice, excellent, excellent. Now, and I think maybe we mentioned it kind of a little bit in passing earlier, but but this is not the first um, Kickstarter game that you've been involved in, right? No, I made one before, like uh, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about that one. That one was also so, a successful project, right? Yep. Yeah, it's it funded. Uh, it was. Uh, it's called Way of the Fighter. Uh, so it's inspired by, uh, you know, classic uh, fighting game, Fatal Fury, Street Fighter, all these different uh -huh. like classic uh, arcade game, and uh, it's basically like uh, really like taking that theme and and putting it into a board game format. You can play two player. You can play four-player tag team. Uh, it's in retail right now. Actually, it just hit retail last week, so I think it should be in the shop like in the, this week or next week, and you can buy it online. So again, like this is the big, like for me, it's a big moment. Like it's two big moments at the same time. It's very stressful. I have my, <laughs> my, my, my second game being visible to everybody to look and, and, and basically judge. I mean, it's fine. That's, that's, that's the prerogative. And yeah. my other game actually eating retail, which is kind of the moment of truth for any board game designer. So. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I have uh, palpitations. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I'm gonna throw out a I'm gonna throw out a question, and uh, it's okay if you if you don't want to answer this one, but I'm just kind of curious. Um, what what would be your dream uh, IP to kind of turn into a tabletop game? Wow, that's a big one. Uh, I mean, like Sonic came out of left field, to be honest. Like I was like I wasn't I was not expecting to do something like Sonic anytime like before mm -hmm. I was given the opportunity. So I was really happy. Uh, so it have to be something bigger than Sonic. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> no, <that's, laughs> you know what? You know what I would like to do, and that's like mm -hmm. I know it will never happen. So I'm going to say it. I like to do a game based on a uh, Ghibli property. Like Total oh. or, or uh, any of those games. I was just oh, yeah. like, if I could do that, that would be huge for me. Like, I mean, so I'm, my, my name is Benjamin Yamada. Obviously, it's a Japanese mm -hmm. name. So I'm half Japanese, half French. And so, like, Ghibli is something very special for me. Uh, and uh, I, I have no idea how we start to make a game about Totoro, but I will definitely love to try. So, <laughs> if the IP holders for that are listening, like, he's. He's game, pun intended. Yeah. So con mm -hmm. contact him. So. Honest, yeah, I'll make, make anything video game. I like to do, oh, you know, <laughs> more, more realistic. I like to do Pacific Rim. That'd be fun. Pacific Rim? Nice, oh, nice. Yeah, Maybe you fun. can even make a... Um, did, did you hear that there's a really horrible uh, spinoff of that called uh, At Atlantic Rim? And it was not... <laughs> to be clear, it's not even remotely made by the same people. Like, there's this guy <laughs> in Hollywood that apparently, like, he looks for, like, blockbuster movies. Yeah, yeah. And maybe, he, yeah. Like says like oh he'll, he'll look at a movie that costs like a hundred million dollars to make and he'll be like I could make that for a hundred k and he like, <laughs> like, he makes his own, own version and it's always awful but you know he's got yeah, his own true. he's got his own following so so yeah make sure make sure the person that contacts you is talking about Pacific Rim and not Atlantic That's Rim well. or uh, yeah be careful <laughs> <laughs> don't get too excited. Don't get too excited till you know yeah. you're talking to the real person. Or anything, you know, I'm game for anything video game, really. Like, you know, whatever so, video game I feel with it. Yeah. Mr. Wonder Man says that he'd like to see a Spirited Away board game. Yeah. Me too, brother. I'll be all over Spirited Away. <laughs> that, would be, that would be pretty cool. You know what game I'm still waiting on? I'm still waiting on uh, the Scott Pilgrim versus the World game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Brittany. I've been. Hey, there's not gonna be a Blaster Master tabletop game. <laughs> Come on, let's be real. Oh man! So, but but Scott Pilgrim, man, Scott Pilgrim versus. There's there's two things, right? That would make me die happy. Like one of them is the Scott Pilgrim versus the World card game getting finished and released. The other is, and because that's actually happening. Yeah. The other though is, I was searching uh, this weekend for it, and I didn't find it, and it broke my heart. There's there isn't a Scott Pilgrim versus the World pinball game. Oh, that would be so good. That would be so yeah. awesome, wouldn't it? Right? Like you could have each the music each... and the art and everything. Yeah, like the the evil exes, right? Could each have their own kind of like you know game mode, and you know that'd be pretty oh, awesome, yeah. right? Gideon Graves, <laughs> right? Evil X multi ball, all this stuff. That would be <laughs> that. I, I can picture it. I I can I can see it. I can picture it. So, yeah, that would be cool. But, uh, Anyhow, I'm going through the uh, the chat to see if we've got uh, if we've got other folks. I, I think everybody's planning pretty much right after this to go over to uh, to Brittany Bowe's uh, uh, house. There, she said that she's got your prototype parts uh, from the game. So oh. I think we're all just planning to like run over there and play the game after this. I want to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't care how long the drive is. I'll I'll make it. So Fiery Red says he's got one last question. We'll see if it is. Oh, Fiery Red, I I can't ask that question on the show. We're we're like a family program. I'm just kidding. He hasn't even typed. <laughs> he or she has not typed their their question yet. Um. Oh, she wants he or she right wants to know. Uh, how is Big the Cat not overpowered? I guess I guess concerned that that maybe one of the characters is OP. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't the comment earlier, uh, and people are talking how overpowered. I guess the question I would like to back is like, why is he overpowered? What do you think? I mean, like, why is you know, what do you think is overpowered? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Fire red. What what makes you think uh, Big the Cat would be overpowered? So, and Brittany, I, I she says they're in Seattle. Hey, you know, my wife's got family in Ephrata, so we'll just you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, hey, I love to travel. 
Yeah, it's it's only yeah. like a that's a, that's only like a fourteen hour drive for me if I don't make any bathroom or uh, rest stop breaks. So I can make Ooh. it. We'll get on I'll the just, plane to meet you there. I'll just mm-hmm. I'll just cap this off and set it over here, and I'll be there in fourteen hours. <laughs> yeah, man, and I love to travel, so I'll I'll make the trip. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie, Lizzie finds ways to get to all these places. I don't know how she does it. Yeah, just, uh, you know. So, I mean, like, so right. just to, uh, so just, uh, uh, yeah, Fiery Red uh, responded back, says, takes no damage from badniks or racers, only potential is through environmental hazards or boss. Yep. So, ability oh. is to move nearby pieces. Yep. So, can still reach same max speed. So, the, uh, the first one is like, he's big, right? Uh, so, there are large pieces, all large pieces are easier to, uh, to hit and, uh, so that's one of the reasons why, like this, it is of a pirate, but also he's big, um, and uh, he and so for hazard wise, he has to be more careful. Uh, the ability to move nearby pieces, um, that is powerful. It's situational though, uh, the, the the powers have to realize like they are. You have to have the card. You have to have the power card to be able Ooh, to. So okay. people like when you play the game, one thing that there's there's like different layers of game. So. You, the way the gameplay more is quickly for you guys, I'm, I guess you haven't read the rules. So it's basically like everybody have a hand of four cards and then you're gonna play, everybody put a card face down and then you reveal the card and then each card has a number and from the highest to the lowest, you're gonna basically do the action on your racer. Mm-hmm. So of course there is the action itself. And then on the, on the card, there's also the movement where it's gonna basically, you're gonna have to move your speed and you don't have a choice. You have to move, it's mandatory. So the action is optional. You can you know, jump a bit outside. Or uh, or do some uh, <clears throat> some spinning, but then the movement is not is mandatory. So you can control your speed, but then you have to move forward, forward. So the game push you forward, and if you go very fast, you have to go very fast. No choice. Uh, you can jump or you can run. The uh, oh. there's another game there when you have like a you have the uh, the the card is like if you play a card with a higher number, you're gonna go first, obviously. Uh, that has multiple advantages. For example, it means that if you're behind somebody that you are trying to hit, you're trying to spin on him, for example, uh, then you can you can you will be able to move before and therefore be able to hit that person. If that person is trying to run away from you, he's going to want to play a higher card so he can run away from you before you can hit him. So mm-hmm. that is piece of And the other aspect is you all you also be the first one to draw um, the uh, a card. So basically, like once you play a card, as soon as you played it, you, there is four cards you can choose from, and you pick the one you want to. So if you want to pick oh. like say, like the, you need the, the card that you need next turn, so, so sometimes you have to do the movement which is not the best because you want to be able to go first to get the card that you need next turn to do something you want to. Mm. Yeah. And so right. you, to, all of those all of those racers' abilities are based on like being able to use the power card and. You have to have this card to do it, and when you play four players, trust me, everybody won that card. So it's gotcha. not going to be it's gonna, not going to be that easy to get. So, so, so as Glenn oh, Beck would say, it's all about the connections. Yes. <laughs> 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 so, uh, all right, and that's about as political as we get on this show. Um, <laughs> when you play with kids, for example, like this, I mean, like this, this kind of subtlety. When you play with younger kids, it's lost. It doesn't matter. The the goal you focus more on the placement and the movement. But gotcha. the fact that you're going to try to pick the highest card to basically screw your neighbor uh, is, is, is a bit, you know, it's advanced. Nice. So, oh, and oh it adds, God. I think, the, as, as you said, it adds the kind of the, the, a quick paced nature to the yes. to the game, right? You don't end up, it's not like chess where like you can wait for like 20 minutes on somebody to make a move, right? right? So like, that's the thing. So the game is very simultaneous. Like my games, that's kind of like one of my signature, I guess, uh, is like yeah. I always try to make my game when people play card at the same time or do things at the same time Mm -hmm. the game has a quick pace and things go fast nice nice speaking of going fast i I want to make sure (laughs) to mention um we are we are coming up close on time here and i want to mention before we got to it uh there's 10 days left to go on the sonic the hedgehog battle racers kickstarter and uh Mm -hmm. your your initial goal was fifty thousand. uh currently you're sitting at uh let me hit refresh so i get the uh so i get the number right um Currently, you're at sixty-seven thousand nine hundred eighty-two dollars. All right, so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, if somebody's thinking like, "Oh, hey, you know, they they made their goal, you know, whatever," um, you know, I don't I don't have to do anything. Um, 
I think, I think, and you've kind of already mentioned like stretch goals and things like that. What, what are some incentives that folks should be keeping in mind for maybe still uh, tossing some bucks the way of this project, even though it's kind of hit its primary goal? So, I mean, there's, there is like this multiple meta. The, the, the very first basic simple is that you get the freebies, right? So if you play, if you pledge a hundred bucks, then you get to be able to have all the freebies. So the more people pledge, the more you get. So right now, if you're at hundred bucks, you get shadow, the shadow expansion. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you get the game, and you get all the bad nicks, which is, I think, great value. Um, and then like, you, you will get Blaze, you get all the extra characters as part of this hundred book without adding anything. So I think yeah. backing for that, you, if you know you're gonna get the game, and if you have the cash flow right now, you sh it, there's no reason why not to. You get more for less, basically. Um, oh. And if, if if everybody does that, I mean, that's basically Kickstarter. If everybody does it, everybody gets more. That's the basic idea, right? Yeah. Um, the other aspect is that, well, I, don't quote me on this, I probably shouldn't say it, but I don't know that we're going to release everything at once when it hits retail. So you could say, like, oh, no, I'm okay. not going to back it, I'm just going to wait. Sure, but you might wait a long while. You know, if you like Big the Cat and you're not backing the game, you might like a long while before mm -hmm. this, before this, this uh, character comes out, right? Um, oh, man. And so like, if, you want, if you want the thing right now, that's the best way to get it. Oh, I mean, not right now, in, in October. Um, <laughs> uh, and, right this moment. Oops. Not right now. Unless you're going to go to Brittany Bowes in uh, Seattle, um, you're, not gonna get, you're not going to get any of this right now. Uh, Brittany, it's your friend be... Lizzie. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you have, uh, yeah, I mean, and it's basically it. And also, you know, it's just a, 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 having people backing the Kickstarter and showing interest for it, it helps, it helps the game in retail. It helps market the mm. game. It helps us like reaching out to a, uh, to uh, distributors and everything and tell them, look, we have a lot of interest in the game. So uh, that's kind of the less indirect effect of Kickstarter is that it helps mm -hmm. like more publisher like Shinobi 7 to, to, to show that you know, we, like, we have a successful product that you can put on your, on your, on your shelf so people will be able to see it and, and get excited about it. So it's not just you playing your game, but it's also more people and that wants this game and the more the merrier. I mean, technically, like, this game, if you want, if you were really like hardcore, you could go crazy and stack multiple games together, and you know there's a okay. there's a lot of customization allowed in that game. So Lizzie wants to know. Um, this may or may not be true. I might be totally making up this question, but uh, Lizzie wants to know if Jaleel White will have a cameo character or card in the game. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <I love> <laughs> Some know him as the voice of Urkel, but Lizzie will always know him as the beloved voice of Sonic. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. I, I do know. I, I backed one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> I you. gave y'all one. <laughs> yeah, I think Lizzie. Lizzie would probably back for like the entire thing. She'd probably back for the entire ninety thousand dollars for for Julia well. White. And right now we are we are like you know when you do Kickstarter like there's a way that like mid mid project low when things are kind of slow yeah. uh, mm -hmm. it's gonna pick up at the end hopefully uh, mm -hmm. so I think we're gonna like people should be confident that we're gonna there's, there there will be a lot more unlocks uh, mm -hmm. toward the end of the Kickstarter of course like the better we get now the the more interesting it's gonna be because people are like you know when you land on the Kickstarter page. Uh, you see the product and you're like, oh, wow, there's only all of that stuff and you do it right now. And so it helps. And it's kind of, it's very much that, that um, snowball effect, right? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, wait, are you going to have something beyond 150? So like 200 or something? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. No, I'm just curious. I'm like, yeah, oh. I don't, I, I, not, 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 I would say none of my knowledge. After that, my knowledge okay. is very Well, if you do, don't limited, worry, I'll support like, it. I don't click, run the click, I don't refresh. Run click refresh every day, Lizzie. <laughs> every moment of every day, click refresh on that page. So my goodness. Yeah. So my wife is asking me why why did I just send her a link to uh to Julia White? Honey, I'm sorry, I copy pasted into the wrong window. So <laughs> she's like, <laughs> Why are you like sending me a Wikipedia article on family matters? <laughs> <laughs> so I meant to send that to you, Lizzie. I apologize. I'll I'll, I'll correct that mistake oh, after okay. post show. So we're coming up on time. Does anybody have any uh, follow up questions uh, that they want to do? So I see a shaking a head no from uh, from Jeremy and friend um, Teen Wolf. Oh, you got anything you want to add? 
Um, I'm just curious, I guess, what was the most challenging part of designing the game? Because it sounds like, as I imagine, you probably go through with like any board game. You have to keep doing a lot of mm -hmm. play testing, making sure the mechanics work. Um, was there anything in particular that you found challenging about it? I, th <clears throat> I think like making it so it was accessible was the hardest part. Like it mm. started a lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I, I make I guess I make game more like for fourteen plus like adult gamers. I guess <clears throat> so making it like for me that's my personal thing. Like actually working with uh, with Rob, like developer, really helped me because he has a lot more experience in that. So he helped me a lot, like kind of figuring out how to to streamline the game and mm -hmm. to make it accessible to 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 a younger audience. When I say young, I say family audience. Uh, and uh, and uh, and that was that was the most challenging. And I think we I think we got there. I think I think right now it's really at a good place where like if you're like me, you can enjoy the game, and there's enough meat on its bone that is interesting and, and engaging. And if you like, you know, if you play Ticket to Ride, you can play that game, yeah. and you can right. enjoy it. Awesome. if you're a kid, you can play that game. I know my daughter is waiting for for this. My daughter is just three, so she's not gonna play the game, but she's waiting for the miniature eagerly. Aww. Like she knows, she knows all the Sonic characters. She has never seen a played Sonic. You know, life, but she knows every Sonic characters. Yeah, uh, that's adorable. <laughs> that's <cute. laughs> well, I think this is really this is really a cool opportunity for families that kind of want to game together. Because I know some some games, you know, like games like Exploding Kittens. Um, it's yeah. it's definitely a fun <laughs> game, but sometimes it's a little too like depending on the the atmosphere and depending on the guests, it can be a little too childish and and toilet humor. Um, other times it could just be like pure pandemonium, and then you've got other games like Cards Against Humanity, right? <laughs> Which like <laughs> kind of leans hard in the other direction. But Sonic, yeah. what I think is really interesting is Sonic is kind of a character and a family of characters that can kind of speak to entire generations, right? Yeah. Like adults can mm -hmm. still kind of love them and connect with the character, kids can kind of love them and connect with the character. So it's an excellent opportunity for some good, clean fun, but neither neither side really kind of has to like compromise, right? Right. That's, that's kind of the interesting thing is that Sonic is both like, and that's I knew that just by, by when I do my research is like, and that's why what's very unique with Sonic is that it has it is both for kids. It's, it is at the end of the day a kid character, but the audience have grown with it, and so there's a lot of people who are not kids at all, which are like me in the 40s, and, yeah. and love that characters, and so. Trying to make a game that address all the people and can make it, and so you can make you can be thirty and still enjoy the game and and still like and it. It actually really like you. I mean, people will see when they say it, but if you play the game competitively, it's not. It, it has meat. Like it has like it has. Uh, you're gonna th at the end of the game. You're gonna have, you're gonna have like use your neurons to uh, to to win it. Um, you can also enjoy it like casual and just you know move around and get hit and it doesn't really matter and. And the kids have fun and uh, and uh, and do things, and so trying to to hit that mm. that like you know that the right the right tone I guess was was the most challenging and interesting. So uh, I guess I'll I'll wrap us up since everybody's uh, all done with their main questions and everything. Um, with a uh, fiery red says, "Hey Benjamin, thanks a lot for your dedication to the game and remaining active in the community. Great to see developers showing that much passion for their work." So, thank you. Yeah, we got some it. we got some kudos there. So listeners, mate, we saw you in the chat. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, folks, I want to remind you of places that you can catch us. You can catch us on YouTube, you can catch us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, you can also catch us on Roku. If you look for retro reload uh, on your Roku, go into the search section, just type in retro reload. You can add the channel for free. Uh, I'm not gonna say all the episodes are up there, um, because that would take too much work and I'm kind of lazy. But I can say that the best yeah. ones are definitely there. So if you want to check it out, um, you know, Lister's mate loves, you know, he's got a Samsung TV, but he loves watching us on his Roku plugged into his Samsung TV. So awesome. you're saying, you're saying, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer, I work for Roku. So um, that said, folks, this has been Retro Reload. And before we fully sign off, go I'm ahead, Jeremy. Sure go. Lies, lies. I'm Street Fighter. I'm terrible at Street Fighting games. So. He cornered me and mm. kicked me the whole time. Which which character was he, by the way, when this happened? I used a couple of them. But it was all same tactics. Kept no kicking. So 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 Jeremy basically spam kicked his he friend the into whole a time, And then I got a few good kicks in, but he just kicked me in the corner. 
I, I gotta I gotta tell you, awesome. nobody puts baby in a corner, Jeremy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Jeremy I was like, yeah, because you cheated. <laughs> Jeremy may or may not be back with friend next week. <laughs> so I guess it all yeah. depends on if his Street Fighter uh, you know, etiquette more combat next. Yeah. So. You know, improves. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, when this game finally comes out. out? Lizzie, Lizzie, go ahead. <laughs> when this game finally comes out, remember everybody has to eat a chili dog while playing this game. <laughs> but don't spill the chili dog it. contents onto the game. That would be horrible. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> wear, wear like a bib and a drop cloth, and then have the the game a little bit further away. So, um, Benjamin, um, if folks want to find out more about the Kickstarter, right? They mm -hmm. can certainly, um, I'm going to have a link uh, in the description to this for Sonic the Hedgehog Battle Racers is what it's called. Um, it's by Shinobi7. That's right. Um, so you can go to Kickstarter and you can search for that. But where else can they uh, can they find out information about this game or about other things that you've done gaming related? Well, they can go to my Twitter account. Uh, it's uh, Benjamin Yamada. Uh, it's pretty easy. So you can, you can, if, you look, if you look for Sonic or for my name, you'll find it. Uh, also, awesome. also I, have a, I should say, like, I have a Kickstarter live tomorrow. So I think really? 7, yeah, seven thirty. So if you wanna, if you like, you know, if this interaction have whetted your appetite and you have more questions, you can join the Kickstarter live, and, and I, I will answer more questions. Excellent, folks. Woo! Keep an eye out for the Kickstarter live tomorrow at seven thirty. Is it Pacific or what time zone? It's Pacific. 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 Pacific yeah. yeah. Seven thirty Pacific. Awesome. So, if, folks, if uh, I apologize, we didn't get to everybody's questions. Um, we we had tons of questions in the chat. Appreciate your interactivity as always. Um, feel free to tune in the Q and A tomorrow um, and maybe ask some of those questions. So, uh, in the meantime, this has been Retro Reload, my friends. So, thank you guys. Was awesome. <laughs>